thanks for joining me today. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be doing something completely off the wall. So I got into this really creative mode and decided to do something really weird and funky. So I'm using the smaller uh, mold number one, um, sorry, mold number three. <laughs> Yes, mold number three from the Happy Dotting Company. It's a smaller stone and I painted it white with deco art um, as a base coat. And then I just didn't really care about measuring or anything, but I sectioned it off into eight sections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sponge on um, different colors uh, of different, um, I don't know, just different to each square or each rectangle or whatever I ended up drawing there gets its own color. So I have to start off by saying I apologize, huge apology for the shakiness of this video. And trust me, um, when I was doing the editing on it, uh, I felt so bad, but uh, it's the only one that I had available, but I can promise you that it is the last video that's going to be shaky because I have moved everything around in my studio so that I can film better. I've got better lighting. So um, I'm again, really sorry guys, but this is the last video that's going to have all of this shaking going on. <laughs> so the colors that I've been using I started off with um, lavender from Folk Art. Then I went to Cool Blue for Apple, Apple Barrel. Then I did um, the, what's that? Uh, Holly Green from Americana. Then I did the pink, which was from Folk Art. And then I did the light green from Craft Smart. Then I did the Daffodil Yellow from Folk Art, and then I did Red Alert from Deco Art. And last but not least, Jack-O-Lantern Orange by Deco Art. So yes, there's a lot of colors that I'm using in this, and yes, they will all be listed in the description below. So now what you're watching me do is make a huge mess. So what I did was I took a wide brush and I dipped it in water so that it would make the paint flow and it made this very ugly mess. Um, it actually even took the purple and the blue off the rock. <laughs> so um, doesn't matter. Uh, we're just going to save this and uh, make it look really good and uh even though it wasn't the effect I was going for, it still still turned out really, really good. So now I want to splatter the same color of paint. And I'm just using an old toothbrush. And as you can see, I'm flicking it with my thumb. And it is putting these little splashes of color all over it. And I just keep rotating the rock around so I get all sorts of uh, color uh, spread across. And you can see by my thumb there that... Um, it's quite messy, <laughs> but it was fun nonetheless. And then the colors that I really wanted to show, I used my uh, dotting stylus and I just haphazardly uh, threw on some color blotches here, there and everywhere. And again, I used the same eight colors. Um, so I did this because I was going for sort of like a galaxy kind of look. Um, but it didn't quite work the way that I wanted. But you know what? That's okay. It still turned out pretty good. Um, it's a little muddy in places, but you can still sort of see the colors that I used. Um, and now I'm just putting on a top coat of the Sparkle Varnish from Folk Art just to seal everything because I don't want it to get smudged any more than it already is. But I also want some glitter because, I, again, I wanted it to be more of like a galaxy type. And what I'm drawing on here right now is um, what we're going to be doing is a butterfly. So I've always wanted to try butterflies. So I'll be honest, this is my, um, my first go at doing a butterfly. 
and um, I don't really draw this fast. I'm usually a very slow drawer. Uh, however, I had to speed this up because this video after I edited was still 44 minutes long. So I didn't want you guys to sit around and watch this for 44 minutes. So I sped it up and uh, brought it down to, I think it's what, the 17 minutes, uh, I think it is. Anyways, so um, yeah, it, it took me a long time. So, uh, but I still had a great time doing it. It was a lot of fun. Um, so now that I got it all sketched on and you would have noticed that I started to sketch the inside of the wings and then I thought, wait a minute, I'm going to be painting it all black. So why am I sketching this in now? So I stopped sketching and then now I'm painting everything black. And I'm using one of my, um, my little uh, nail brushes that I got from Amazon. There's a link in the description below. Please let me know any of the links that you try that are that um, are listed in the description. Um, let me know if they don't work. Um, I do try to uh, check them every once in a while, but sometimes the supplier that has those things for sale don't anymore, and um, I don't always check. 100% of the time for every video. So please let me know. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just basically putting on um, everywhere that I sketched. So like the, the body, the legs, the antennae, um, his little tongue thing there and uh, his wings. Um, I paint everything black because we're going to try something new. And I'll admit I've tried this technique a couple of times off camera and um, this is my first time actually doing it on camera. So I hope you like it. Um, it's basically using um, a top coat for nails, but it's UV. So you need a UV light. If you don't have any of these things, that's okay. You don't need to use um, this. I think it's chrome powder that I ended up using. Um, you don't need to do that. You can easily get the same effect uh, or something similar if you used metallic paint or if you used um, glitter paint. Um, there's so many things out there that you can really make a butterfly look really pretty. And the creativity that you can get when you're doing the wings, it's just the sky's the limit. I guess literally because butterflies fly, right? They have the right in their name. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just, um, just go with it and uh, have fun with it. Make your own designs. And um, actually this would have even looked really cool if I had have just used the black paint and outlined and um, let the color of the rock behind shine through the wings in the, I guess like the little sections that you draw inside for the design and um, maybe that's something I'll do another time and uh, we'll let that uh, beautiful background uh, shine through the wings but in this particular one I really wanted to try this new technique that I have been practicing uh, to get it done right. I'm still not quite 100% with it but I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so let me know what you think of this technique. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section below and um, let me know if this is something you want to try, if you want to see more of this, uh, of this type of technique. Um, just let me know. Or if you just want to say hi, say hi. I, I'll say hi back. Um, anyways, so um, I've been busy uh, working away at uh, getting it all colored in black with the black paint. Now, ideally, it probably would have gone a little faster if I used a bigger brush, but this one already had black paint on it, so I thought, oh, I'll just keep using it. So um, what I've done, too, is uh, this is maybe a little tip and trick thing. Um, I color in or I paint in um, within the same outline. So what I mean is I outline everything and then I shade in or I paint in what each area is. Because um, what happens is there's a slight little ridge in the paint strokes uh, or from the brush strokes that you can follow. 
and that gives you an idea as to where the front wing stops and the back wing starts. So um, that's just something that I do. Um, it's it maybe something that um, is something that you do or or not do. Um, it just it works for me. So now I'm uh, sketching on with my very small charcoal pencil. <laughs> I think it's time to uh, uh, maybe get a new one. Uh, that's a little bit longer, <laughs> but uh, I use this guy a lot. So um, definitely one of my favorite tools in my tool chest here that uh, I always have handy for when I'm doing some painting. Um, and you can get this on Amazon. I found them on um, actually at my hardware store. Uh, so they have both white and charcoal colors. So if you're doing a sketch on a light background, the charcoal one seems to work better and you can see it better than the white. So um, totally up to you. Uh, that's where I got mine. And uh, I'm guessing I'm going to have to go back very soon to <laughs> get another one. Anyway, so I'm just sketching this all on and uh, making it look uh, the way that I want it to. Uh, I do change it up a little bit too as I uh, paint things on, but again, that's just me. That's what I do. I'm very, very rarely do I follow my guidelines, but it's good to have them on there and um, uh, just to have like a guideline, basically what it's for. Um, so especially when I'm doing my mandalas, uh, I'll put on my guidelines or I'll have a design in mind or when I when I start going at it it's not what I originally planned when I'm finished so uh, that just tells you the creativity um, process and how it goes through so um, okay so you will have noticed that the body is a little bit different color and I do apologize I forgot to press record um, but uh, I did some shading on his uh, body there so uh, it's a little bit different and I do at the end put on some bling bling uh, for his body and on his wings a little bit um, but I'm not sure if that was filmed or not either but you'll see it in the end um, in the video or the sorry the photos that I take um, and I put them at the end so you'll see uh, all the bling bling and the shine and the shimmer and everything else that goes along on this uh, beautiful butterfly. Uh, so stay tuned till the end and um, uh, to see the reveal. So um, I'm using gold. Uh, this is glorious gold from Deco Art that I'm using. And I'm just outlining uh, the wings. Um, I want the wings to really stand out and really shimmer. And I did the... Um, uh, outlining or I will be doing the outlining of all of the designs inside the wings as well uh, I'll be doing that all in gold um, so once I get that all done I let it dry completely before I move on to the next step so um, basically you want all of the paint to be as dry as it can be before we move on to the next step of using the uh, nail polish um, I guess it's like a UV gel because uh, you don't want to get that into the gel and you don't want the gel to get into your paint so um, get this part done do all your cleanup when you need to uh, if you've got your gold paint is too thick or maybe you've gone over just take out your black paint and uh, get in there and clean it all up just to make it look so perfect the best way to let me know that you like this video is giving me the thumbs up. But you can always subscribe and hit the bell button so that gives you a notification every time I pop a new video on. And don't forget to share because the more people that I can reach, the more people I get painting and that's my goal. So make sure that you do the thumbs up, do the subscribe, do the bell, leave me a comment, share, share, share. <laughs> that's that's my spiel for the day um, so uh, it just it helps me out and uh, it helps you out um, 
by leaving me a comment to let me know maybe there's a new technique that you've seen and you want me to try or maybe different types of paint um, we can uh, do anything that you want uh, maybe more mandalas if you're interested in those um, bigger rocks smaller rocks natural rocks uh, you name it you let me know what you want to see um, I can tell you that I am working on a few uh, Easter uh, related rocks that will be coming your way shortly um, I've also been looking at the um, and forgive me if I say this wrong but the Pysanky eggs so they're the Ukrainian eggs so I've been really watching a lot of videos on that and I'm really interested in trying that but I don't think I'm going to uh, do the actual thing I might do an egg and film it for you guys um, I haven't decided yet, but stay tuned because there's lots on the on the go. There's lots that are halfway edited and um, I'm looking forward to getting it all out to you guys. So um, so back to this, as I showed uh, that the uh, top coat is like it's nail polish, um, but it needs UV light in order for it to cure or else it just stays wet and gets sticky and makes a big mess so and you need it dry to put the chrome powder on so I use chrome powder and it's um, a shift color so it goes from pink to purple and uh, has a bit of holographic characteristics to it which is really cool um, and I uh, could do this in, with so many different things you don't need to do it this way um, there's my little UV light um, for doing that. And it goes on for uh, 60 seconds. That was just really quick to show you. Um, and now I'm just putting on this with a regular Q-tip. And you can see the color shifting as I'm putting it on. It's so pretty. But you can use dragon dust. You can use metallic paints. You can use color shifting paints. There's so many things out on the market these days. You don't need to do it this way. You can do it your own way and make it yours. Uh, but this was just a technique that I've been playing with for a little while and I really wanted to show you guys. So here it is. Um, so I let it dry, give it a coat of resin and it's done. So there you have it folks. Life is what you make it. So get creative. Mm -hmm.